for watching the first episode of AI Research Weekly Update from Henry AI Labs. Following this introduction is going to be the list of blogs sourced to make this video. This includes things like Google's AI Research blog, Facebook AI, two blogs like Berkeley's AI Research Lab blog. Please leave blog suggestions in the comments that you think should be covered uh, for the making of this video. So the way that this weekly update series is going to uh, be organized is it's going to cover blog posts from August 11th to today, August 18th. So for this week, for example, it's going to cover things like NVIDIA's Project Megatron, Facebook's Physical Reasoning Environment, and Google's Project Euphoria announcement. I hope that this video series can be inspirational to AI researchers, data scientists, software engineers, graduate students, and anyone else who might be interested in keeping up with artificial intelligence and particularly deep learning research. Thanks for watching. This is the list of AI research lab blogs that have been covered for this first weekly update video. The ordering of these blogs is not a rank order. It has no meaning uh, which ones are presented first and last. And again, these uh, blogs, their posts are only included if they've posted in this window from August 11th to August 18th. The first blog post covered in this series is NVIDIA's Project Megatron. This is a really interesting research study that trains the largest ever transformer model, language model, with 8.3 billion parameters by using a really clever multi-GPU model parallelism scheme. So language models like BERT and GPT-2 have uh, used enormous amounts of parameters, GPT-2 especially, but this model is 24 times the size of BERT and 5.6 times the size of GPT-2. So the way that they build this model is through a multi-GPU parallelism system. So model parallelism is this idea of splitting the layers of a deep neural network across different GPUs. So this is pretty straightforward with uh, neural networks that are very sequential, but with the transformer model uh, shown here with the query key value mechanism, it's a bit uh, more tricky to figure out how to parallelize the model. So on the other end of model parallelism is uh, data parallelism, where you would distribute the different uh, data sets to train them, like different subsets of the data across different GPUs. So their multi-GPU uh, training scheme, it trains this 8.3 billion parameter GPT-2, and they show these plots showing how their technique is able to scale and improve training efficiency with more GPUs. So at just adding more GPUs to training the neural network isn't necessarily, you know, is not just a given that it's going to improve the training. You need these uh, algorithms to really utilize the multiple GPUs. So interestingly as well, they show the plot of the different uh, model sizes and its uh, uh, web text validation perplexity. So they show that they do early stopping with the 8.3 uh, billion parameter model and they attribute it to uh, overfitting. So in the end when they train the um, larger models you can see the 345 million parameter up to the 8.3 billion parameter model and how they perform on these different natural language processing uh, techniques. So this is a really interesting blog post on model parallelism and how they can use it to train an 8.3 uh, billion uh, transformer language model. This week, Facebook's AI Research Lab blog announced the FIRE uh, AI benchmark for physical reasoning. What FIRE is, is it's, a, it's like an environment for reinforcement learning agents where they have to select where to place uh, this red ball on the map such that the green ball uh, touches the blue ball. So you see, like in, uh, in this puzzle, the model has like an initial state of the world, like the green ball is placed here, there's a red ball, and then the model would, the reinforcement learning agent would optimally choose to place the red ball right here such that it uh, drops onto this thing and launches the green ball over to touch the blue ball. So the fire uh, benchmark consists of 50 of these kinds of situations. And it's really interesting because it requires the reinforcement learning agent to have a physical understanding and reasoning. Yeah, contrastingly to other uh, popular reinforcement learning environments like uh, Go, StarCraft, and Dota. So it's really interesting in the context of building robots that can learn about physics and specifically do it quickly as uh, they really emphasize this in their post that they try to uh, reward the reinforcement learning agents that can do this in as few trials as possible. Facebook additionally published new advances in natural language processing to better connect people. This article covers their advances on the WMT machine translation competition using models such as the Roberta model from uh, Facebook, which stands for robustly optimized BERT with a, a new pre-training approach. So they discuss how uh, successful their techniques and you know the overall research has been on the WMT benchmarks of English to German, German to English, English to Russian, and Russian to English. They describe how they uh, improve their translation language models 
by incorporating a highly structured loss function that has like a forward uh, metric, a backward translation metric, and then a metric of fluency. So in the article, they uh, describe their regard to, they describe uh, some of the recent advances across uh, NLP metrics like general language understanding and reading comprehension from examinations. So they also uh, talk a lot about the need for new data sets and new challenges, new metrics, things like going from the glue baseline to the, this uh, super glue metric. So some of the um, new data sets and challenges that they describe include things like, instead of just asking trivia questions like whether jellyfish have a brain, they want the natural language processing systems to have in-depth answers to questions such as how do jellyfish function without a brain. So overall, this blog post is a great uh, way of getting caught up with natural language processing. It almost reads like a survey on uh, new advances, and it has a lot of links to new data sets and challenges in natural language processing and understanding. Our first blog post from Google AI's blog is on joint speech recognition and speaker diarization via sequence transduction. So this idea of speaker diarization, is a really important problem in understanding medical conversations. This is the task of saying who said what, did the doctor say this or did the patient say this when transcribing from speech to text. So they present their model, the RNN transducer, which improves performance from a 20% error rate to 2% error rate in the diarization error rate of classifying who said what. So they describe in their blog post the conventional uh, system of tokenizing words and classifying them based on the labels. And basically, they just describe in detail how, it, how the old technique works. And then they describe how their recurrent neural network technique combines the speech recognition with the prediction of who is the, you know, who is saying what in the sequence. So overall, they show this graph showing how their uh, recurrent neural network transducer system outperforms a conventional system on different kinds of data sets in speaker diarization Google's Project Euphoria is a personalized speech recognition for non-standard speech. So what they discuss is problems with people who have, uh, you know, speaking disabilities or heavy accents and how it can be difficult for automatic speech recognition systems to interpret and transcribe speech to text from these speakers. So what they do is they collect a data set uh, of people speaking who have ALS, 36 hours of audio from 67 speakers, and they fine tune their state of the art uh, speech to text models such as the listen attendance bell model and the RNN transducer. This is the RNN transducer, and this is the listen attendance bell model. So these, this data set consists of audio such as this. Get a to see about it. Come right back, please. Get struck that again. Turn it down a little bit, please. So they show how uh, how the standard speech model would interpret these different, uh, you know, speech commands. And then they show how the fine tuning on this data set can improve the model from the baseline. And then, you know, after fine tuning it with the uh, customized dialect with the two different models. So overall, this shows, uh, they show insights into how they can fine tune and how they can overcome this problem to make automatic speech recognition systems more accessible to people with speaking disabilities or uh, heavy accents. The next blog post covered is from Berkeley's AI Research Lab. This blog post talks about evaluating and testing unintended memorization in neural networks. This, uh, this phenomenon is best described in this cartoon. The, the guys at the laptop typing in long live the revolution, our next meeting will be at, and then the autocomplete will like reveal this kind of private information. So we, they want to avoid language models that would do things like give away credit card numbers or other kinds of sensitive information because of the way that it's trained and the way that language models learn to predict the next token in a sequence. So what they present in this blog post is a technique for uh, quantifying memorization by using generative models and the likelihood that they place on the sensitive information compared to others. They, um, they also show this interesting experiment where they insert this idea of the random number is uh, 28126501 in, in the Penn Tree Bank data set and how when they train the model and then they seed it with the random number is 2812, the model happily predicts the remaining suffix of 65017. The final blog post covered in the first episode of AI Research Weekly Update is The Batch from DeepLearning.ai. This is a weekly newsletter that uh, covers different blog posts and recommended reading. The first recommended reading is a tutorial on parameter optimization that covers things like how the atom optimizer works. Secondly, they discuss the greening of AI and a report from the Allen Institute about uh, asking uh, researcher papers to include the efficiency in terms of the uh, 
floating point operations and the overall uh, cost of training these deep neural network models. So another uh, thing they present is shifted data, no problem. This is a, uh, a paper that proposes a new replacement layer that alleviates this problem of when you shift uh, images left and right, it will result in different uh, classification predictions. The next thing is the Edison machine. This is a discussion on whether an AI uh, can patent different technologies based on uh, using neural network knowledge domain models that form new associations and come up with new ideas. The next idea is neural nets, a uh, paper on using GANs and CNNs to automate the process of coming up with instructions for fabric knitting, uh, you know, for fabric knitting. So the next paper is uh, recommendation uh, rigorous research. So this is a study on uh, the reproducibility of recommender systems research showing that of 18 recent neural network models for top end recommendation, only seven of them were uh, reproducible and six underperformed the traditional approaches that don't use deep learning. Thanks for watching our first attempt at AI Research Weekly Update. Please leave a comment if you feel like the uh, blog post, the research wasn't covered in enough detail or not enough research was covered or if there are certain uh, labs that should be sourced that aren't on this list. Thank you so much for watching the first AI Research Weekly Update. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more artificial intelligence and deep learning videos.